Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Rafał Klimek and I'm a front-end developer and UI designer with uh, over 10 years of experience in indus industries ranging from air travel through tourism and content management. And now uh, I'm in biopharma uh, R&D. Where uh, at the moment my mission is to basically save the scientists from themselves, uh, because uh, as I uh, as I quickly uh, noticed, they are very good at uh, creating uh, frightening amounts of data, but not very good at coming back to it and, and coming through it. So uh, I will try and uh, show some of the work that I've done in this area. Uh, so, um, two words on, about my uh, team at uh, AstraZeneca. Uh, our part in drug discovery is to make best possible use of uh, newest technologies uh, uh, in very diverse and cross-functional teams to make best use of hundreds of terabytes of data that we process daily. Uh, since, as most of you probably know, the future and basically the, the present as well is uh, of, of the fields uh, such as life sciences is very much computational. So uh, why is metadata so important in, uh, in that mission? Uh, basically because it makes it possible for researchers to describe the science, science they, they're doing and communicate between teams. Uh, also, it ensures the results are stored in a fair, uh, machine readable manner as well. So some of our processes in the past lacked the metada metadata driven approach. So we had to make uh, a deal. Uh, we decided it's, it's time to, to change. Uh, and if uh, we decided that if the metadata led process takes equal to or less time uh, than the current uh, solution, uh, we will implement uh, the, the tool that I will show you in a minute as part of the process or as basically the first step of uh, any project. So what do we want uh, our metadata to be like? Uh, well, first we need, uh, we, we need it to be in a graph-based uh, format. So it is flexible in capturing the complex and uh, very inter intertwined relationships between entities. Uh, and uh, when we uh, achieve that, uh, it makes the uh, metadata actionable as it gives us uh, way more information on the provenance of the resulting data, uh, the data, uh, the data of the results of the uh, experiments, and it gives us the script kind of uh, for what it's uh, what what is supposed to happen with data when it's captured after the experiment, uh, which then let's us uh, um, uh, build better uh, automations around uh, the data analysis and so on. Uh, to do that, we came up with a tool we called uh, Fluid Form, uh, which is uh, basically a YAML text file disguised as a set of uh, dynamically generated web forms. Uh, in it, uh, we support and make heavy use of YAML features like anchors and uh, references. And we provide live uh, autocompletions and validations uh, via arbitrary JSON schemas, uh, which are uh, based on our uh, painstakingly uh, created uh, controlled vocabularies. Uh, YAML crea created in the fluid form is always one-to-one -one with, the, with the version in the text editor. Uh, and I will uh, show you how, how, the, how it's done uh, in a, a second. So this is the, the, the fluid form uh, interface. Uh, as you can see uh, here on the, on the right, uh, we have uh, kind of two modes uh, of uh, operation in, the, uh, in our application, the text editor and uh, and the uh, sections of the f dynamic uh, form that are built upon it. Uh, and uh, YAML create, uh, allows us to create graphs, basically that's, that's why we cho chose YAML. And fluid form lets us create YAML. Uh, so that's, that's why uh, if, you, if you're wondering why, uh, why, I'm, why I mentioned YAML so many times already, this is, this is the exact reason. Uh, in our applications, we have, uh, as I mentioned, two ways of creating the metadata file. 
and uh, thanks to the uh, two-way communication between them, uh, each node in the text file, as you can see, like for example, this sample here um, uh, that is uh, described here, uh, is represented uh, as a section in the in the form. Uh, uh, so um, we have a, a live validation uh, as well, uh, as I mentioned uh, in the uh, in the application. Uh, Dropdowns in the in this uh, validation, uh, uh, sorry, in this auto completion uh, are populated by uh, structures defined in the schemas. Uh, and, then, uh, and this is important to, 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 uh, to add. I think uh, this is not limited to simple key value pairs. Uh, so uh, if, an, if a term or object has a nested structure in the schema, editor will also offer um, here uh, a, a nested, uh, nested completion. You can think of this as, uh, as com auto completion uh, capabilities of any sort of uh, modern IDE. Uh, also, uh, we have live validations, uh, as you can see here. Uh, so any terms that are not valid, are, are not uh, defined in the schema, will uh, right away be flagged uh, in the form uh, here. So, so for example, if uh, material is, is, uh, um, is not uh, correctly um filled filled in uh, it will uh, it will show up right away uh, in the bot uh, at the bottom of the uh, of the field uh, as well as uh, in the uh, like a global uh, list of errors that we have uh, on the on the side of the uh, of the editor as well um so uh, this is this is how we deal with those um next uh, i mentioned that uh, yaml um Let's us uh, create uh, create graphs. Uh, so um, um, aliases are very helpful with that. So uh, for for example, here you can see that we can we can define a uh, sample uh, as mentioned uh, earlier, and then reuse it uh, in for in for example here uh, a subject. Um, and uh, a, here you can see a collapsible preview because uh, YAML files can get pretty big, and uh, especially when they are presented in the in the way uh, in this way. Uh, so anchors are a crucial feature of, of, of YAML that we that we make uh, use of uh, for for uh, allowing our users to reuse objects uh, and basically edge handling of the of the graphs. Uh, as mentioned before, uh, we have uh, the JSON schemas, um, the, which are um, uh, in charge of, the, of uh, providing validations uh, and, and the uh, structure of the graph. Um, uh, also take care of, um, of uh, validating those uh, referen referenced uh, objects, as you can see here. So for example, if, we, if uh, in the subject node, we have a sample, that is not defined, for for example, or or basically is uh, it well is is of a wrong type. Uh, we use a reference of a wrong type. It, it will also get get flagged uh, right away. So uh, this way, we ensure that the uh, resulting graph uh, meets the rules and can be saved and and then. Uh, um, go to the database and so on sorry uh, okay so um this is uh, basically it so just just to recap uh, some some conclusion conclusions uh in our uh, in our daily process metadata is a necessary component uh for research uh, but uh, we did this because uh, we had very uh, a lot of challenges around creating uh, metadata and uh uh, we had uh, v v different uh, formats of it. Uh, it wasn't uh, easily findable. Uh, we couldn't we couldn't build automations on top of them. So we had to we had to kind of uh, uh, have a better better uh, process around it. Uh, so we we decided to build a f uh, a, f uh, a tool that will um, make scientists' life uh, much easier uh, in this way. And also, um, 
since we will use a, a graph based uh, format we we can we can treat metadata as a sort of a script for what what happens with the data next so we can we can actually have a um uh, a lot of automations around the around the resulting data uh, from that and uh this this fluid form since uh, we we think that uh, it, it's uh, its use can be a little bit um, it's it's not limited to to, to our application we will uh, be uh, distributing this as an npm package uh, that basically works for any yaml file any configuration file or anything anything you you, you could uh, think of uh, that that can be done with with yaml uh, and also um, uh, associated uh, json schemas yeah so that's basically uh, it from me. I think I, uh, I, uh, yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> I did it uh, quite quite quickly. So I, I think we can uh, we can fit in uh, a few questions if anyone has some.